Okay, for each of these things here, um, these couple guided examples. This first one, verifying it just means checking that it works for one or more values, not proving that it works for all values, which we'll do in a second. You can check trig identities by just subbing in values and seeing if they work. Like for this one, just you know, check each side separately. Can we uh, stop talking if you don't happen to be doing what we're doing? Check each side separately. Just put an angle in. I just picked a random angle, uh, 5.1. So one side sine 5.1 minus 3 pi gives me that. Not that that matters for anything. Negative sine of 5.1 gives that same value. Okay, way of checking it. Um, the other way is to uh, do it by graphing. And graphing, if you graph each side separately, you're basically doing the same thing if you're doing it by graphing. Okay, graphing, if you uh, put each of those in separately like this, sine of x, you've got to use x on here um, when you're graphing functions like this. Uh, x minus 3 pi on one side, uh, negative sine x. Uh, let's uh, make this a thick line so we can tell the difference here. I'm going to do zoom trig just because it's a quick way of getting a decent window for this. Here's the first one, which is what you expect, right? Negative, was it, wasn't the first one, was the first one I put in or did I put the minus 3 pi one first? I can't remember. Negative 3 pi, that's, that's one of them, right? X minus 3 pi, the other one is exactly the same. Okay, it's covering up that one. That's again another way to check. If you want to prove though that it works, you need to use algebra, which you can just work down one side just like any other proof until you make it look like the other side. Uh, up here, this is what I have done. If you want to check this, this expression here is the same as this whole expression. Okay, this thing right here. You can um, substitute certain values in, right? This one you know, cosine of 3 pi is negative 1. Think about the graph. Use your calculator or whatever. Sine of 3 pi is another one you know. If you think about the graph, it's 0. So those two values let you uh, start to evaluate each of those terms. This one ends up being, if you have 0 times cos theta, it's 0. So this just simplifies to negative sine theta, which is what you want. That's proving it algebraically, because no matter what angle you put in there, that's going to work. All right? That's that first one. Um, the second one here uh, is a kind of a harder question to think about if you didn't have any of the guidance here. With some of the guidance, maybe it's a little bit easier. The first thing you have to recognize is if you're asked for this, sine of two angles added together, you can write it as the sum of kind of the product of some of the individual trig functions. So you use that identity and start to evaluate that, each of those things. Some of them you know. You're given a couple of values here, 3 fifths and negative 5 thirteenths, so you can put those in for what it says they're equal to, right? Some of those are given right off the bat there. The other ones you don't know, these ones you don't know. Those ones you can work out. If you know a single trig ratio, this is a concept, right? If you know a single trig ratio, you can find, as a fraction, you can find the other ones without even finding the angle. You don't need your calculator to find the angle. If you know that cosine of n is negative 5 thirteenths, draw a triangle in quadrant 2 so that the cosine is 5 thirteenths, right? Negative 5 thirteenths there. You can use Pythagoras, figure out the other side is 12. And then that tells you that the sine is 12 thirteenths. And then you can use that value in here. For sine of n. And you can do a similar thing for the other angle, right? This one. Okay, you set up a triangle for angle m. Work out that the cosine is negative four fifths. And then that value can go in there. And you can work it out. And it's gone to this. If you didn't actually get around to trying that question, then that's pretty pointless, us going through it so quickly like that. You're not going to get another question like that. I mean, you might, but you you have to be able to kind of think your way through it here. The key to this is this, right? Knowing that. The rest of it is uh, stuff we should already know, right? How to work out trig ratios from uh, other trig ratios, things like that. There's some questions similar to do here, but there's some other ones that this doesn't look anything like what either of those examples look like. 
But if you know the concept here, which is those identities, you should be able to use them. All right. Are we okay with this stuff? <laughs>